We're going to stay on the global front with our next guest and take a closer look at abortion propaganda, specifically in Africa. As Africa has struggled with a number of socioeconomic problems, many wealthy donors from Western nations have assumed the role as helper. But in a new book, one Catholic woman native to Nigeria says these donations are often attached to sexual liberation ideology and used to push views on contraception, population control, and abortion into the continent. Obianuju Ekiocha is founder of Culture of Life Africa and author of a new book, Target Africa, Ideological Neocolonialism in the 21st Century. Uju, it's so good oh, to speak with you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, Catherine. It's always exciting to be here. Thanks for being with us. Yeah. First things first, what is ideological neocolonialism? Right. Can you give us an example of that? It's a mouthful, but it's a, it's actually it's a phenomenon that has been happening uh, for a few good decades now, but no one has actually put a term to it or a name to it. But recently, Pope Francis has spoken about it at a number of engagements, particularly when he was at the General Assembly at the United Nations a few years ago here in America. And it is uh, actually something that, that explains or describes this relationship between Western countries and uh, developing countries, particularly mm -hmm. African countries, in, you know, within, with my own interests. Mm -hmm. So whereby the Western countries are in this position where they are providing aid, they are providing help or funding, but then within that relationship, that imbalanced relationship, that power imbalance, the Western countries uh, or the Western donors are then dictating their own ideals, their own ideas and ideologies. And for our viewers, just so they know, you were born and raised in Nigeria. I was, yes. There's a line in your Uju, that really struck me. Right. How does practically sterilizing the poorest women in the world give them control over famine, drought, disease, and poverty? It does not make them more educated or more employable. Right. So this is, this is of course, something I feel very strongly about, but it's also very true, mm -hmm. right, that in recent times, in these uh, last couple of years, we have seen a lot of so-called family planning projects. Mm -hmm. We have seen people bringing in contraceptives into African countries. We have seen, you know, Western donors pushing African leaders to uh, expand, you know, their, their contraception projects within mm -hmm. their own country, thereby, you know, pushing population control in their own way. There are women who don't have children in African countries but who also don't have jobs who also don't have uh, you mm. know who also don't have uh, you know the, the, the well without they don't, they don't have food they don't have access to water they still don't have access to basic needs so the contraception at the end of the day does not do any of those things what makes a real difference what helps people escape po the clutches of poverty is always education and access to you know to to good food good water good health care system mm. so the basic needs and amenities and that's not what our donors are bringing to us. Not like the contraception and abortion you're seeing being pushed by these groups claiming to bring aid yeah. to Africa. Aid. And you go through some talking points that I'd like to just bust right here while you're here. Yes. Talking points that we hear often from these groups. First one first. Contraception is the key to unlocking the economic potential of the African woman. Yeah, I just alluded to that now. So you give a contraceptive device or contraceptive drugs to a, an African woman, it's not going to change her situation. It's not going to bring her automatically out of poverty. What will bring her out of poverty if, she, if she's able to get into school, if she's able to get to a nursing school, uh, you know, an engineering school, a university, mm -hmm. that actually when she gets everything she needs in life to, to rise out of poverty. Let's go to another talking point. Legal abortion will reduce the maternal mortality in Africa. Actually, there is no evidence of that. So there are African countries uh, that, a few African countries that actually have legalized abortion. Mm -hmm. And one I always like to cite there as example is South Africa. Mm -hmm. South Africa has uh, legal, legalized abortion 20 years ago, but there are actually countries within Africa, there, is, there are countries like Egypt uh, that don't have legal abortion, mm -hmm. but have actually much lower maternal mortality rate wow. than South Africa. I mean, wow. much lower, I think it's something like 67 uh, per 100,000, while South Africa is in 300 per 100,000. So the difference is clear. So the difference, uh, it, what makes a difference in maternal mortality rate is not abortion, it is not even contraception, but it's actually basic 
uh, antenatal and prenatal care for women who are pregnant. So access to, to doctors during pregnancy, access to, to people who would help them with professional uh, delivery, uh, access to blood transfusion services for cases of bleeding, access to good obstetric care. These are the things that actually make the difference. Well, thank you for sharing that message with all of us. Obi Anuju Ekiocha, the book is Target Africa. Again, thanks for being here. Thank you, Catherine.